Hello guys and welcome back, this time, we will check out a tool that's built on top of geometry nodes, and I think anyone working with architecture design should know about this one. So, once you visit the main site for the modifier, link to it in the description by the way, you will find couple of free things that are awesome to go through, however for this time, we will focus on the main modifier, and once you're inside the page, you will see a short video here explaining the tools and what it can do to make your work easier, which is really amazing by the first look. So down here, you will find the area to download the latest version of this, and you need Blender 3.0 and above, but the older versions that works on 2.9 and below. Now once we install the add-on, you can see here both the version you install along with the shortcut for the main menu. So, in a simple scene like this one, we can select this shape, and hit J to see the main menu for the tools available. This new version has a lot more options than the older one. So let us start exploring it. We will go first with the architecture section. While the shape still selected, we can hit the wall button, and it will make it into this. So, what this tool do is take the edges of the object and make it into walls, and here on the bottom area, you can control both the height and the thickness of the walls you added. We can also enter edit mode for this shape and change the position of its vertices, and that will affect the wall parts as well. Let us hide this one and go for a bigger plan, something like this which you can make if you want to draw a plan out of an image in a fast way. So once you have those lines, we can hit J and select the wall option. To better understand what this do, we can go to the modifiers area and see what operations is there, and as we said, this work is similar to geometry nodes, so everything you do or add are editable. Now to add some windows to this wall, we can hit J again for the menu, and choose the window option. With this one we need to draw the windows area, then give it the depth to cut the wall, so for that, it's probably easy to enable the snap tool. And here is the window, pretty amazing if you ask me, and it also has the materials fixed so you don't need to worry about that. There are also a couple of options in the architecture section that you can go through. The stairs option is the easiest way to add stairs to your scene, and as before, once you add any object, you can go to the modifier stab and edit anything around it, whether it's the height, length, step shape or the sides panel around the stairs, everything can be changed to fit your scene. Same thing goes for the spiral stairs, you can also after fixing one of those objects, save it to any asset library you have, and reuse it again in any project, that for sure would be helpful. There's also the floor button, which will add this type of wood flooring. I don't know if this usable in interior scenes. But for an exterior one, it can save you quite the time.
there's also the handrail option, and once you select this one, it gives you the ability to draw around your balcony or terrace covering, and this would be really helpful for irregular floor plans, where you can just select the handrail and move the curve point to adjust it. For the boolean tool, there are a couple of tools that gives you control like this one, however, having this option here is great, and you can with the tool options change the section to any of the available ones. Now to the array part, this one is quite fun to play with, and can make your work much easier, so with the array you get four options, first one is standard linear array, and the control panel will show on the left corner. We can also from this panel change the array type even after we add it, so along with the linear type, you have the grid and the circular ones. For the last option, we need a curve in the scene, so I will add a curve first, now if we select them by order, we can explore the curve tool, which is separated from the array curve, and let us change the settings a bit to see what this do, so what this one do is making the object follow the curve, and also, changing its shape throughout the path, however, if we apply the array curve on this cube, it will only follow the curve and stay in the same shape. Now to explore the manage section, we have two important tool for architecture, both of them need to be a default setting in Blender, first one is the proxy, to see what this do, let me copy this tree, and place it here, so usually in exterior scenes, when we need to copy things multiple times like trees, we use link to keep their loads out of the main file, but what this tool do is make the object appear in a more simple shape and that happens in both edit mode and viewport area, then once we render it for a final image, it will give you the original tree shape, this one is quite important for us, especially if you're operating on a laptop, this tool is by default available in most 3D softwares, so we hope Blender could focus a bit more on this area. The second tool we need is the group option, with this one, we join two or more object in one group, this one also is by default available in most 3D software and with this, we can make it easier to navigate around the scene while for example having the table and chairs in a group, and the sofa set in another one, this will make it easy to select any part of your scene and isolate it to work things around, to edit any group you added, you need to open the side panel, and go to the add-on tab, here you can delete, edit or ungroup any set of objects you operating on. Now to the scatter section, so the thing is, when I try to scatter objects with the new version, it gives you a new window, and the settings are not available, not here on the corner, nor in the modifier panel, while in the previous version, the scattering option is quite easy to work around, so is it a bug, or am I doing something wrong, I really don't know, me as a lazy person usually go with the short answer, so I installed both versions the old one and new, so if you don't have this problem or knew how to fix it, share it with us in the comment section. The IV button in the scatter section works fine, and you can as before go to the modifier settings and change anything around it to make it fit your scene. Last but not least is the deformation section, not that important to our work still pretty cool to play with, this tool being free is absolutely amazing, so if you're interested in it, 
visit the main site to explore much more amazing stuff, and that's it, stay sharp guys, goodbye.